in my last video we have learned operations on graphs now based on this we are proving a theorem which states a connected graph g is an euler graph if and only if it can be decomposed into circuits we know what is an euler graph an euler graph is a graph which has an euler line and euler line is a closed to walk which passes through all the edges of graph g exactly once and decomposition means intersection in fact and circuits means it's a closed to walk in which initial vertex other than the initial vertex no vertex is repeated more than once so we'll prove a theorem if graph connected graph is an euler graph then it can be decomposed into circuits if graph can be decomposed into circuits then that graph has to be an euler graph up to prove euler graph implies decomposed into circuits or if graph can be decomposed into circuits then it has to be an euler graph so we'll prove this i'll take the second part first suppose g is my graph which can which can be decomposed into circuits decomposed into circuits then i have to prove that it is an euler graph okay we know decomposition operation okay that if g can be decomposed into circuits then that implies g is the union of edge disjoint circuits g is union of edge disjoint circuits decompose it can be decomposed means like that decomposition means if i have decomposed g into g1 and g2 if i have decomposed g into g1 and g2 then g1 union g2 gives me g and g1 intersection g2 is empty okay so it i am taking the first this part g can be decomposed into circuits so by the definition of decomposition in fact g is nothing but union of edge disjoint circuits we know in a circuit every vertex is of degree 2 every vertex is of degree 2 in a circuit every vertex is of degree 2 therefore in whole graph when i consider in the graph g degree of every vertex is an even number every circuit every vertex in the uh, circuit is of degree 2 so when i combine everything and i'm getting g in g every vertex is of even degree every vertex of g is of degree even so when in the graph if every vertex is of even degree then graph has to be an euler graph therefore g is an euler graph so if g can be decomposed into circuits then by definition of g uh, decomposition g is nothing but union of edge disjoint circuits so in each circuit every vertex is of degree 2 hence since g is the union of these circuits every vertex in g is of even degree by definition of an euler graph if every vertex of a graph g is of degree even then graph has to be an 
Euler graph. So converse part I am taking I am taking let G be an Euler graph. Let G be an Euler graph. <coughs> let me consider a vertex say V1 from G. Uh, when I say vertex V1 there has to be two edges which are incident on this V1, one to enter V1 and another to leave. Since graph G is an Euler graph, it has to have so those vertices which has at least two edges incident on V1. Let one edge, uh, among two edges, let me take one such edge which is in between V1 and V2, okay. I am taking one such edge which is in between V1 and V2. We know in Euler graph every vertex is of even degree. So degree of V2 is also an even number. Degree of V2 is even number. Therefore there must be at least one more edge which is incident on V2. I am taking a vertex V1 from graph G. I am saying there has to be at least two edges which is incident on V1. Okay, one to enter V1, another to leave. Let us take it like that. Now, one such edge I am considering which is in between V1 and V2. Okay, I know every vertex in Euler graph is of even degree. Therefore, there has to be one more edge which is incident on V2. There must be at least in fact at least one more edge incident on V2. Okay. So let that edge be H be between V2 to V3. Let us take it like that. Okay. <coughs> now if I proceed like this, I will come back to the vertex which I have already used. So that I am getting a circuit now. If I continue like this, I am coming back to the vertex which I have already used. So that forms a circuit. So let me call that circuit as gamma. Now from this graph G, I am removing this circuit gamma. What remains? This is my new graph now. If I remove a circuit which is formed by taking V1 from V1, I am taking the edges. Uh, which is between V1 to V2 then V2 to V3. I will continue like that and I am getting a circuit and I am calling that circuit as gamma and I will remove that gamma from G. Now this is my new graph. Okay, Of course even in this graph all the vertices are of even degree. In this graph also vertices are of even degree. Okay. So from the remaining graph, remove one more circuit in the same way. Okay, how I have done here, the same way from this graph, I will remove one more circuit. So I will continue this procedure until no more edges are left. So that I am getting say from this, I have got one circuit. Okay. From this, I am removing one more circuit. Say this one, I will call it as gamma 1. Gamma 1. This was my new graph. From this, I will remove one more circuit. Say gamma 2. Like that, I will keep on removing the circuits. Okay, how are those circuits? They will be edge disjoint. So, hence the proof, in fact, because from G, it is an Euler graph. I am starting with the vertex V1. I am taking 
next vertex v2 that there is an edge between v1 and v2 like that one more edge v2 to v3 like that i'll continue and i'll come back to the vertex where i have started so that forms a circuit say gamma 1 i remove that circuit from graph g so the new graph which is formed that that also has vertices of even degree so again from this i'm removing one more circuit like that i'll continue this procedure till no more edges are left so we are getting different circuits whose union gives me graph g hence the proof next one more type of graphs that is arbitrarily traceable graphs an euler graph an euler graph is said to be arbitrarily traceable from a vertex say particular vertex from a vertex v if every walk every walk starting from v okay every walk with initial vertex initial vertex v can be extended to form an euler line can be extended to form an euler line of graph g if i have a, a euler graph say g is said to be arbitrary traceable from a vertex v if i consider all the walk any walk if i consider with starting from v can be extended to form an euler line of graph g we no normally say graph is arbitrarily traceable if it is arbitrarily traceable from every vertex with, with whatever may be the vertex from every vertex graph has to be arbitrarily traceable then we say whole graph is arbitrarily traceable suppose if i consider this is one vertex this is another vertex v1 v2 this is my graph say g1 okay if i consider from v1 and from v2 i can arbitrarily trace a graph okay which has to form euler line so when i take a close to walk walk with this vertex then it should form an euler line can be it should be extended to form an euler line if i consider like this then i'll come back and i'll get i'll back to this so this is this forms an euler line even if i start from this i'll go back i'll go like this like this like this like this so this is an example for arbitrary arbitrarily traceable graph from every vertex it is arbitrarily traceable so whole graph is arbitrarily traceable if i take one more example say if i take this graph i'm considering two triangles this graph okay name the vertices a b c d and e okay now from this vertex if i start i can get an euler line by like this by going this way from c it is arbitrarily traceable like c a b c e d and i'm coming back to c but if i consider from a or b or ed then it is not arbitrarily traceable this is arbitrarily traceable from 
vertex C. Okay, I'll tell you why not. Before that, I'll mention one more uh, theorem which states an Euler graph G, an Euler graph G is arbitrarily traceable from vertex V if and only if, if and only if every vertex, sorry, every cycle of G passes through V. Now I hope you got why this is not arbitrarily traceable from A, B or E or D. If it's a Euler graph, I mean if I take a Euler graph, then I can say it is arbitrarily traceable if and only if every circuit should contain, should pass through the vertex which I am considering. So in this case, this cycle and this cycle will pass through this point. So this is arbitrarily traceable from C. Now if I consider one more example, say I'll consider this. A, B, C, D, E, F. These are the vertices. Okay, here if I apply this theorem, I can say it can be divided into many circuits. If I consider this as one circuit, say F, A, B, and one more, F, D, E, and one more, D, B, C, like this. There is no circuit which is uh, which contains a common vertex here these two may have but it should all the cycles of G should pass through one particular vertex if there is such vertex which is passing through all the cycles of graph G then I can say that it is arbitrarily traceable in this case it, there is no such vertex therefore it is not arbitrarily traceable graph.